Well, howdy again everyone, and today I'm checking out what must be one of Nikon's best-selling camera lenses to date, the AFS Nikkor 50mm f1.8 G. It's for Nikon's digital SLR cameras, full frame or APS-C, although it will also fit on their new Z-mount mirrorless cameras if you have the expensive FTZ adapter. It's available for around 200 US dollars or 200 pounds in the UK, so it's not quite the cheapest 50mm lens out there, but still, you won't have to remortgage your home to get hold of it. Everyone loves a fast 50mm lens, well most people anyway, because on a full frame camera it gives you a lovely standard field of view, neither wide angle nor telephoto, and with just a little emphasis on your subject for getting out of focus backgrounds. Nice. If you're shooting with an APS-C or DX sensor camera, then it's the full frame equivalent of a 75mm lens with a depth of field that will look a lot deeper. That's still useful for portrait photography, and many owners of Nikon's APS-C cameras will have discovered this lens already. It does not come with image stabilisation, but most new cameras are getting it built in nowadays anyway, and that bright maximum aperture of f1.8 lets you get faster shutter speeds in darker situations. So, let's have a look at the lens in question. Its build quality is a cut above average for a lens in this class, and its size is just a little bigger too. Here you can see it beside the brighter f1.4 model, and like Tweedledum and Tweedledee, there's little to set them apart. It's mostly made of plastic, but it actually feels quite tightly constructed. It's based on a metal lens mount, with a weather sealing gasket around the edge, nice. You also get a switch for changing between auto and manual focus, and a rubberized focus ring, which turns averagely smoothly and has a useful distance scale to it. That focus ring can be turned at any time, and the front glass element does not turn or extend as you change focus, so that's pretty useful if you're using a polarizing or graduated filter. The autofocus motor works pretty quickly, quietly, and accurately, although the quiet shushing and clicking noises it makes might be picked up by your camera's microphone when shooting video footage, in fact it will be picked up. The lens displays some pretty notable focus breathing, with your image zooming in a bit when you focus more closely. That'll help you to get a little closer to your subject, I suppose, but it's still a bit of a pain for video shooters. The lens comes with a cloth pouch and a nice little plastic hood as standard, its filter size is 58mm in diameter, and it weighs only 185 grams. Overall, it's a bit nicer to handle than the cheaper Canon and Sony 50mm f1.8 lenses, which I've tested in the past. Nikon really tried to make something of this little lens. Well, let's move on and look at its image quality. I'm going to really challenge this lens by adapting it onto my full frame camera, a Nikon Z7, with its very difficult 45 megapixel sensor. In the middle of the image, we see pretty good sharpness, but only a reasonable amount of contrast. Image quality in the corners is noticeably soft. f2.8 shows a tiny bit more clarity in the corners, but the middle of the image looks great now. Stop down to f4 for perfect image quality in the middle of the picture, and a little more contrast in the image corners. f5.6 doesn't really show much improvement, but stop down to f8, and we finally see some good sharpness. f11 looks about the same though, so this is as sharp as you're going to get on full frame. Overall, that full frame image quality is good enough for the lens's price, but nothing to really get excited about. Its image corners take quite a lot of stopping down to persuade them to become sharp, but at least there's almost no purple fringing to it, or chromatic aberration. Now, let's see how the lens can cope on one of Nikon's DX cameras, a D5600, with its 24 megapixel APS-C sized smaller sensor. Straight from f1.8, I'm impressed to say that the picture quality is pretty sharp in the middle of the image, and the corners a lot softer, but not too awful, actually. In fact, for an inexpensive 50mm lens on an APS-C camera, it's actually very good quality. Stop down to f2.8 for more contrast in those corners, and truly excellent sharpness back in the middle. 
stop down to f4 and the middle remains this sharp but the corners see a little improvement in sharpness again and f5.6, f8 and f11 all look gradually even better there. So on an APS-C camera it's a fairly impressive performance because normally an inexpensive 50mm lens on APS-C will struggle a bit more than that, it's certainly a bit sharper than Nikon's 50mm f1.4 G lens. Ok, let's move on and take a look at distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera. This is with all image corrections turned off. The lens projects a bit less barrel distortion than usual for a 50mm option, so that's a good start. The corners look a bit dark at f1.8 though, which is what you'd expect. Stop down to f2.8 or f4 and they gradually brighten up. Now let's see about close up image quality, this lens can focus down to about 45cm, average for a 50mm optic and not particularly close to your subject really. At f1.8 close up image quality is very poor, soft and ghostly, stop down to f2.8 though for a simply huge improvement and f4 looks even a little bit sharper. Let's see how well the lens performs against bright lights. The flaring patterns we see look nice and soft, but you lose an awful lot of contrast when bright lights are in or near the picture frame. And while we're working in the dark, let's take a look at coma levels. In the corners of your images, bright points of light will present you with some very strong coma smearing. It's slightly reduced at f2.8, mostly under control at f4, and at f5.6 it's finally gone. Let's take a look at this lens's bokeh or the quality of its outer focus backgrounds, it's not perfectly soft in all situations but to my eye it does look a little smoother than usual for a lens in this class, it'll be quite pleasing in most of your pictures. And related to bokeh is longitudinal chromatic aberration. If we look closely here we can see a fair bit of colour tinting in outer focus areas. At f2.8 those colours are tamed down and at f4 they're gone. So overall, as I mentioned before, this particular lens is a tiny bit more expensive than some other very low budget nifty 50s, but I reckon it offers quite a bit more too. It has nice build quality and decent enough colours and contrast, fairly soft bokeh, it's not the sharpest lens in the world on a high resolution full frame camera but if you have a 24 megapixel full frame camera you'll be pretty satisfied and its performance on APS-C cameras is definitely a little better than average. So I reckon it's going to be well loved by everyone who buys it, I certainly liked it, so it definitely comes recommended.